In this lesson, we're going to finish out this section by taking a look at two more functions, EO month and E date. So let's take a look at EO month first of all. Now, EO month stands for end of month, and it's designed to give us the last date of the month. So in what type of situations might this be useful? Well, you can see on the screen here, I have a loan amortization schedule. Now, if you don't work in the finance industry, you might not be familiar with this, but amortization schedules generally contain a schedule for some kind of loan. So if we take a look at the little table at the top here, just to understand the data, we have the amount that we're going to be borrowing, the loan amount, $400,000. The loan type, well, this basically means when we're paying that loan, we're going to pay it at the end of the month whether we have a balloon payment. So will we be making a bulk payment at the end to clear the balance? Well, in this case, yes, we're going to pay $50,000. We can see the annual interest rate, the loan period in years. So this is a loan that's going to be borrowed over 30 years. The number of periods per year. So that's basically the number of months per year, which is 12. And then we have the start date of the loan. Now, underneath, I have some calculations which have enabled me to work out what my monthly payment is going to be. Now, we're not going to go through this in this lesson. We will have a lesson on this later on. But the crux of this is that our monthly payment is going to be $177.15. Now, underneath, I have a table. And what this table currently shows is the amount that I'm going to be paying each month, which is a fixed amount, and how much of the amount that I'm paying is made up of interest, how much is made up of principal, and then we have the ending balance. And you'll find that if we go all the way down to the bottom of the loan, control down arrow, the loan decreases all the way down to $50,000. And if you recall, we're going to be making a bulk payment of $50,000 at the end to clear that balance off. Now, with all that said, now that we understand the data, how is the EO month function useful? Well, notice that I haven't completed the payment number or the payment date columns, and we need to add those in. So we're going to deal with payment date in a moment. That's where we're going to use the end of month function. But let's first deal with our payment number. Now, basically what I want in this column are numbers that go from zero to 360, because the total number of periods from which we're paying this loan over is 360, which if you divide that by 12 is basically 30 years. Now I could go into here and start typing zero, one, two, three, so on and so forth. But that's going to be really tedious to do all the way down to 360. Now we have a couple of options when it comes to quickly getting consecutive numbers into cells. We could use autofill or we could use the new sequence function. So let's use sequence. This is one of the newer functions in Excel 365. So let's type in equals sequence. How many rows do we want? Well, we want 360. That's how far we want to go down. But I want to start on zero, so what we actually need here is 361. How many columns? Well, we want to contain it within one column. The start value is zero and the step value is one. So that's how much we want it to go up by each time. Let's close the bracket and hit enter. And that's exactly what we get. If we press control down arrow, we should find right at the bottom, we have 360. So that is working perfectly. Now, the next thing we want to do in here is add in the payment date for each of our loan payments. Now, if we take a look at the table above, we can see that the start of the loan is October the 31st, 2023. So what I'm going to do, the first payment, that's when the first payment is going to be taken. So I'm simply going to link through to this cell just here and hit enter. But check out what happens if I try and drag this down. You can see I'm just getting the same thing repeated over and over. Now that is related to the fact that I'm always referencing this cell in the table. So now in the cell underneath, I can type in equals EO month and I can use the previous month as my start date. And I want it to go up by one month each time. So when I close the bracket and hit enter, I can then double click to copy this down and it's going to give me the last day of each month. And interestingly, notice that when it gets to February, it's included the fact that it's a leap year. So Excel has the ability to work out leap years as well. And now my amortization schedule is complete and ready to send out to the customer. Let's finish off this lesson by taking a look at e-date. 
Now this is a really simple concept. EDate just allows us to calculate future and past dates. So in column A I have a list of dates and I want to calculate what the date will be one month, three months and ten months into the future, but also what the date was one month ago and four months ago. So this is where we can use the eDate function. So let's type it in. Our start date is what we have in cell A5. And if we want to do into the future, we use positive values. So if I want the date one month ahead, I type in one. Close the bracket, hit enter. And I'm sure you can imagine what we would type in if we want it to be three months into the future. We're going to have a three in there. Close the bracket, hit enter. Let's do the final one just here, eDate start date and this time we are 10 months into the future. Perfect. Now what about if I wanted it one month into the past? Well this works in a similar way really. We can type in eDate, select the start date, but instead of providing Excel with a positive value we want to provide it with a negative value instead. So if it's one month into the past we want a minus one in there, close the bracket, hit enter, and then we can simply drag this formula across, double click to edit it, and then if we want it four months into the past, it would be minus four in there. We can then simply select all of our values and double click to copy down. So that is how the EO month and the eDate functions work. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.